What General Raymond was called, the Battle of France is over. The Battle of Britain is about to begin. Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. Upon it depends their own British life and the long continuity of our institutions and our empire. The whole fury and might of the enemy must very soon be turned on us. Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be freed and the life of the world may move forward into broad sunlight uplands. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and to bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was the finest hour. Winston Churchill uttered his words on the 18th of June 1940. Twelve weeks later, the Blitz was start, and it truly was the finest hour. It's the night of August 25th, 1940. A German bomber crew is flying over the English countryside. They have been tasked with taking out oil tanks at Rochester and Thames Haven. But something's wrong. They've been flying too long, the fuel is low, and they still haven't seen their target. Should they press on? They've already passed the terrifying cordon of British air defence. They can't turn back now. Then they spot an urban area. This must be it. They open the bomb bay doors and the bombs drop. But it wasn't the fuel reserves at Rochester and Thameshaven those bombers had attacked. Those bombs fell in London. There was outrage. Winston Churchill, assuming it was a deliberate attack, ordered a retaliatory strike in Berlin, and like that the blitz started. Hitler was furious and demanded a massive bombing raid on London. And on September 7th, one of the largest coordinated airstrikes with nearly a thousand bombers started. The target, London. The idea was if they could break the people of London, they maybe could break the empire itself. Black Saturday was a huge shock for Londoners. The Luftwaffe arrived in the late afternoon. The British had known that the great air fleet was there, but they thought it would disperse to the attack the usual targets. The Londoners were on the streets enjoying the sunny weather. Then, at 1643, the sirens go off. The Londoners are caught by surprise, and as the SC-50 bombs and the incendiary bombs dropped, London caught on fire. During the raid, loud sirens would warn the populace, you would stop what you were doing and run for shelter. You would be littered there by an air raid warden, volunteers who risked their lives putting up fires and patrolling the streets during a blackout, ensuring that no light was visible. There were three types of air raid shelters. The Andenshorn shelters were made from corrugated iron sheets bolted together and buried halfway into the ground of your back garden. They were dark and damp, so people were reluctant to use them. The Morrison shelters were made for those who didn't have a garden, which were made from steel and could allocate two children and two adults. Plus, it could serve as a table when the city wasn't being bombarded. The other type of shelter was a communal shelter, meaning a shelter for everyone. Places such as the underground tube stations were used as shelter. The RAF, after months of fighting in the Battle of Britain, was heavily weakened. The hope on the German side was that this would be the final blow. Without enough air power to protect their cities, the average citizen would lose hope and break under the constant threat. The truth, though, was that the RAF was exhausted. But the diversion of resources to attack targets that didn't have any effect whatsoever on their RAF gave them enough time to regroup and smash the raids on London. On September 15th, the Germans united another massive fleet of 620 fighters and 500 bombers. And in a push to break London, Germany herself was broken. After this, the Germans changed tactic. That every night, when the British defences were less effective, sent waves of bombers to deliver a payload of destruction in the streets of London and many other English cities, such as Manchester, Portsmouth, Bristol, Cardiff, Plymouth, 
Southampton, Birmingham, Belfast, Coventry, Glasgow and Sheffield. These cities were burned many times and many cut big fires and many people die. One of the tactics used by the British was a blackout, where the city's lights would be turned off in order to deceive the German bombers. The Germans came up with their own strategies, such as their V1 and V2 rockets. The V2 was the first rocket to travel faster than the speed of sound. When it was unleashed in London, you heard the explosion before you heard the sound of the missile. These were the first rockets to be developed, and if it wasn't for this, maybe space travel as we know today wouldn't exist. One very important city in England wasn't attacked. Can you guess which one was it? You were probably wrong, but it was Oxford. Yes, the Nazis didn't attack Oxford because Hitler wanted it as the capital for Nazi-occupied England. One of the worst attacks was in the morning of the 29th of December, on which the second fire of London happened. In February 1941, Hitler was persuaded to concentrate attacks on the coastal ports of Britain to help on the Battle of the Atlantic. As the losses of the Luftwaffe grew, and the invasion of the Soviet Union needed the full support of the Luftwaffe. The last attack of the Blitz was in London on the 10th of May 1941. And now the Blitz was officially over. And so is this video.